What's going on, everybody? Thanks for tuning in. So, good news. I just passed my CompTIA Security Plus exam, and I did it all in two weeks of studying. So, in this episode, I'm going to go through how I did it. But before I get into how I did it, let me tell you a little bit about the story. So, I won't lie to you folks, I was pretty nervous during my test. I honestly thought I was going to fail, but when I found out that I passed at the end, <laughs> that was one of the most relieving moments of my life. <laughs> so, Security Plus is actually mandated by my job. They gave me six months to obtain it from the date that I started, so I kind of had to. And with balancing my personal life with my work life and my family, it came down to me having two weeks to study for it, even though I usually spend a lot more time to prepare for exams. Things happen, life happens, and that's just what the luck of the draw is, in my case at least. Anyway, so here's what happened. So my job, they pay for a boot camp for InfoSec, which is an organization that offers many different kinds of boot camps, such as Security Plus and so on and so forth. So the, the boot camp itself was actually only five days, so technically a week. Um, it was all online. You have the option of doing it online or in person. So for convenience sake, I did it online. And the instructor, he was, he was great. You know, he had, he had great personality. He wasn't monotone or anything. I love his teaching style. He used a lot of analogies, allegories, and metaphors to help explain the topics and the terminology and everything like that. But I have to be honest, the only reason why I went through the boot camp was one, my company was paying for it, and two, included in that boot camp voucher was not only the exam voucher, but if you fail it, you get to take it a second time for free, as long as you pass the practice exam and get a 90 over it. So in my mind, you know, that's two chances to take it, why not? And the company's paying for it, so it's pretty much a no-brainer. But I didn't just rely solely on the boot camp. I actually used other resources, such as Professor Messer, which I highly recommend. There, I also used the Dion tra training on Udemy, which I'll get into a little bit later. And I also used various other online resources that are all free. So here, here are some tips I have for you. Those of you who are thinking about getting Security Plus or in the process of studying for it and have your exam scheduled. So first thing is don't focus on what the acronyms stand for. Try to focus and remember what they mean, if that makes any sense. So the exam is going to be pretty heavy on the acronyms, and there's a lot of acronyms. There's hundreds of them. So making flashcards and stuff like that is okay, but on the back of the flashcard, don't just write what they stand for, but write what they're associated with, what they mean. So for example, SLA, Service Level Agreement. You can write Service Level Agreement on the back in parentheses, and next to it, write what it means, such as, if I remember correctly, it has something to do with uh, Service Level Agreement between two parties or the vendor and your company, and it details and lists out all the objectives and work associated with that agreement. Something along those lines. That was a key thing that our instructor actually told us to do and it helped out a lot. Also, I know how Professor Messer videos can be, the entire playlist is pretty lengthy. So what I did was I watched the videos at 1.75x speed. Some people watch at 2x speed. You can try that if you're able to keep up. I found a pretty good sweet spot between 1.5 and 1.7x speed. And when you watch the videos at that kind of speed, the irregular tone and movement of the video actually catches your attention better. At least that's what happened in my experience. And that's what our instructor told us to do too anyway. So I set out to watch the entire Professor Messer videos, and I did. I watched the entire thing. Once I finished with that, I started taking his practice exams. He has three of them. So I, after the first one, I, I didn't do too well. I think I got about 60-ish percent. So I noted every single question that I got wrong. 
Then I studied those questions in those sections and domains. Then I retook the first exam, but only the questions I got wrong. So I didn't retake the entire thing. I only redid the ones I got wrong and see how I did. And then obviously I did a lot better. I used the same process for every single other exam. This helped home down all my weak points because the answers that I got right, I already knew that section, so I didn't need to study it as hard. This gave me more time to focus on the sections and domains that I was weak on, that I needed more work on. And during the exam, about halfway through, it depends on um, which part. Everyone's experience is different, but usually get your voucher on the second or third day throughout the exam, or um, excuse me, not the exam, the boot camp. You get your voucher about halfway through your boot camp. You can use that voucher to then schedule your test. So that's what I did. I scheduled it for the week after, just so that I can have a little bit more time to study. Some people feel comfortable enough to take it that Friday at the end to each their own. But once you have it scheduled, that's when you know, okay, it's really time to lock in. You have more motivation and more reason to actually study because you have it scheduled. Now, earlier I mentioned the Dion Academy on Udemy. A lot of people use it. In my honest opinion, it's not that great only because the words on the practice exam are pretty wordy. And compared to the actual exam, it is definitely not that wordy. Honest truth is the professor master exams questions are a lot more closer and similar to the actual real exam questions. Also, if you go on examtopics.com, I believe, they have a whole section dedicated to CompTIA Security Plus 701, the latest version. That helped out tremendously. It doesn't necessarily tell you the correct answer, but it tells you the most voted answer. So you can go through it, choose the select, or uh, go through the questions, answer it in your head, and then click on the answer that you think is correct, and they'll tell you if it's the most voted or not. It, it really helps out. I highly recommend that one. Those questions are just like Professor Messer, and they're both very similar to the real exam questions. So again, that's examtopics.com, and then just look for CompTIA Security Plus 701. Next, I also use Professor Messer's notes, and these were all free, by the way. I I was given them through a friend, but I'm sure you can find them online. They're they're not hard to find. Google is your best friend, and YouTube. But anyway, after going through all his videos and then taking the practice exams, I used his notes to study for the questions I got wrong, and I also rewatched some of the videos, but only the videos from the domains and sections that I got wrong or needed more work on. This ended up saving me a lot of time, and I was able to study more effectively and efficiently. Another tip is to be prepared for everything. What I mean by that is be prepared for curveball questions, for sections that you might not have studied well. So really take the time and learn everything. Try to absorb as much info as you can. And don't don't cram it like I did. I mean, some people out there have done it in two weeks. Some people have done it in one week. But if you're the type of person who's not really a good test taker or whatever the case may be, I highly recommend you really take the time and spend weeks, even months maybe, to study for it because I promise you it is worth it. Study everything. Don't skip any section. Don't skip any, any question or any term. Learn all of it because you never know what they might ask you on the exam. Another thing is the PBQs, which are the performance-based questions, you'll typically get maybe two or three of them. I got three of them. And to be honest, about two of them I wasn't very confident on. One of them was like a diagram, and you had to put together basically diagram pieces to build a secure app, such as you know the missing pieces were like a firewall, a load balancer, an instant, stuff like that. And the other one, I forgot what it was, but I didn't do too well. But one of them, I believe, was a drag and drop, where you just simply drag terms next to their meaning. I did much better on that one, I believe. 
Oh, but another thing is they always tell you it's 90 minutes for 90 questions, but the reality is you only get about 76 questions, but you still get 90 minutes. So that was a bit of relief. The first two or three questions, maybe even four, are the performance-based questions, and the rest are multiple-choice questions. At some of the multiple-choice questions, you might have to select more than one answer, and it will tell you, like right after the question in parentheses, it'll say, select two or select three and you'll come across those in the practice exam too so be prepared for those when i tell you that i was nervous ladies and gentlemen i was very nervous throughout the test because i honestly thought i was going to fail there were some questions where i was confident okay i know this is 100 percent right but then there are other questions where it's like oh geez is it this one or that one there's always at least two answers out of the multiple choice for answers that seem that they can be the correct one. And it's honestly a process of elimination, right? One of them is a stupid answer. Then the, another answer is just an okay answer. But then the other two seems like they might be right. Another tip is to take as many different practice exams as you can. Because what ends up happening is I started to memorize the questions and answers from the first few practice tests I was taking from Professor Messer and uh, Dion. Oh, and I forgot to mention the InfoSec Bootcamp. They also offer their own version of the practice exams and their own study material, which I highly recommend you take advantage of. So utilize all of it because the more unfamiliar questions you receive, the more you have to work off your memory because come exam time, you're not going to memorize all the questions, obviously, but you'll be better prepared, in my opinion. So, yeah, I believe that's the gist of it. I passed Security Plus on my first try, and I hope all of you out there who are aspiring to achieve this certification also pass on your first try. There's nothing wrong if you don't. You can take it a second or third time, however long it takes. However, study hard and aim to do it your first time. It feels really good to say that you passed and you have this cert. I've known and dreamt about this cert for years and now I finally have it under my name. It is a great feeling. It's required by a lot of government and federal jobs. It's also required by some private companies out there too, depending on the role. And you typically don't need certs to be a software developer. However, because I'm federal, because I work for the government, they require it and they gave me six months to do it, which is more than ample time. It also feels good to get it done out the way because now I don't have to stress about it anymore. Now I can focus on developing, coding, making more content, doing all these other things. So if anyone has any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave in the comments. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Thanks for listening, and good luck.